Hello electric cyclists and future electric cyclists. My name is Robert Berrio. A warm welcome to the first of seven sessions on how to choose an electric bike. Sessions two to seven will be published at weekly intervals on Saturday mornings. If you see this session for the first time after March 2024, you'll be able to watch the entire series whenever you want. My purpose in making this series is to help you become more knowledgeable so you can make your first electric bike the only one you'll ever need and to help you in your choice if you already have an electric bike and are thinking about upgrading to something more suited to your needs. So session one starts right after this. Thinking of buying an electric bicycle, you've been searching the internet and you've been to several bicycle stores and the more bikes you see, the harder it is to make a choice. What you discovered is that electric bikes are not all the same. They're not like cars, are they? Cars have had more than a hundred years of improvements since Ford's Model T. Consequently, almost all cars have adopted an aerodynamic shape, front-wheel drive, a water-cooled engine, brakes operated by a pedal on the floor, a gas pedal to the right of the brake types of displays, what information the display shows you, and the pros and cons of the different types of displays. We'll talk about the three ways you can make your bike move, and finally, We'll talk about the two different technologies of pedal assist and which one is best for you. Before diving into pedal assist systems and how we make an electric bike move, we'll start with the equivalent to the automobile's dashboard for an electric bike. Most electric bikes have a remote control on the handlebar with buttons connected to a display also on the handlebar. This provides the rider with controls and information about the operation of the bike. The basic parameters are speed, the amount of assistance the rider has told the motor to provide, and I'll tell you more about this later, remaining battery charge, which is equivalent to the car's gas gauge, odometer reading, trip distance, and time elapsed during the current trip. Some provide additional parameters such as the power used by the motor at any moment in time, the temperature, or other technical information of no interest to the average cyclist. Many manufacturers, instead of designing their own display from scratch, will simply install a Chinese-made one like the KT LCD3. LCD stands for Liquid Crystal Display. The advantage of liquid crystal is that it's easy to read even in full sunshine. Some e-bikes come with a fancy color display like this one. Although attractive at first sight, it's very difficult to see in sunlight as the sun's rays are too powerful for the display's lighting. Some electric bicycle makers, like Bosch, have designed their own proprietary display. This is the Bosch Intuvia display, an elegant and practical design. Nerds will prefer a primitive looking display like the Grin Cycle Analyst, which provides tons of technical information that would be irrelevant to most riders. When you want to make your car move, there's only one way, and that's to press down with your foot on a pedal located on the floor called accelerator or gas pedal. But with an electric bike, we have three ways of making it move. Unlike a car, it's possible to move the bike entirely with human power by pedaling, like with a non-electric bike, without the use of the motor. There is a type of motor called direct drive motor that would make the bike difficult to pedal because the way it's made causes electromagnetic drag, whereas another kind, a geared motor, is quite easy to pedal on reasonably level roads that are not too hilly. Because electric bikes are heavier than regular bikes, all of them are a little harder to pedal than regular bikes. Depending on the size of the motor and battery, 
An electric bike with all its wiring, controller, and display can weigh from 15 to 30 pounds more than a regular bike. We will be talking about the different kinds of motors in part two of this series. All of what I just said will make more sense after that. But of course, if you buy an electric bike, it's because you want to run it with the motor. And there are two ways that you can make an electric bike move with the motor. I'll start by talking about the second way of moving an electric bike with the motor. In Canada and in the US, we can make our e-bike move with a throttle, the equivalent of a car's gas pedal, making it a Class 2 or Class 3 electric bicycle. The throttle can be either incorporated in the hand grip as a full twist throttle or a half twist throttle, or it can be a small lever operated by the thumb. The more you twist the grip, or the more you press on the thumb control, the faster the bike will go. Some people report that holding a thumb throttle for long periods of time gets tiring, whereas this isn't an issue with a half-twist throttle. Throttles are not allowed in Europe, and unfortunately, our European cyclist friends don't know what they're missing. But for an electric bike to be legal in Canada, the bike must be capable of the first way of being moved with the motor. So now let's talk about the first way to make an electric bike move with the motor, the pedal assist system. I say the first way because an electric bike must absolutely be equipped with a pedal assistance system in order to be legally considered a bicycle and not a motorcycle. With a pedal assist system, the bicycle software is configured to automatically power the motor when it detects that the rider is using the pedals, and once he or she stops pedaling, the motor assistance turns the motor off. The remote control I mentioned earlier is a selector switch that has up and down arrows, or plus and minus symbols. This is what tells the motor how much power you want it to deliver when you turn the pedals. The pedal assist selector switch is connected to a display on the handlebars, which shows what level of a pedal assist you've chosen. Electric assist bicycles usually have five levels of assistance, numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Some models have only three or four levels of assistance, and others can have up to nine levels. Level zero is when the motor supplies no assistance, which allows the rider to move the bike entirely with his or her physical power. Level one is the minimum the motor will give you, but providing the maximum range. And the highest level tells the motor that you wanted to give it the maximum power it's designed for. The speed of the bike is proportional to the level of assistance selected. In other words, the bike will go faster with level 4 than it with level 1. The bike doesn't move just by selecting the level of assist, it will move only once you start pedaling. What the buyer of an electric bike must know is that there are two different technologies of pedal assist, and they're very different from one another. Cadence sensing and torque sensing. Let me explain. Cadence sensing simply tells the system that the cyclist is turning the pedals. When the system detects that the pedals are turning, it tells the motor to engage. With this system, there's a brief delay between when you begin pedaling and the motor kicks in, giving a slight thrust forward. And when you stop pedaling, there's a delay of a second or so before the motor cuts out. The motor doesn't respond to how fast you're turning the pedals, but to what level of assist you've selected. The other pedal assist technology is called torque sensing. With this technology, there is a torque sensor that measures how hard the cyclist presses on the pedals. The harder you pedal, the more the motor will help you. The assistance selector button will tell the motor how much maximum power to supply at that time. Torque sensing pedal assistance delivers a very natural and smooth response to your pedaling effort.
It's like riding a regular bike, except suddenly you feel as if you're Superman. Torch sensing generally delivers better range than cadence sensing bikes, but that comes at the expense of making you work harder. As opposed to the smooth acceleration of torque sensing e-bikes, cadence sensing provides a jolting acceleration which some riders actually prefer. Just in case you're curious about the two different mechanisms, I'll take a moment to explain this picture. On the left is a ring of magnets in the pedal crank. As the pedals turn, a little detector senses the magnets as they pass by, telling the controller that the pedals are turning and that it needs to turn the motor on. On the right side is a picture of a torque sensing device that fits inside the bottom bracket between the pedals. This device senses the amount of twisting power being applied to it, and it sends a signal to the controller telling it how much power to send to the motor in proportion to the amount of torque the cyclist is applying. Earlier, when I talked about throttles, I alluded to the classes of electric bikes. The industry recognizes three classes of electric bikes, and the laws vary according to the part of the world. Class 1 is an electric bike that can be operated only by turning the pedals. The motor can be in neither the front wheel hubs or the rear wheel hub or the pedal crank, and it may have either torque sensing or cadence sensing. As long as it needs the pedals to operate, it's a class 1. This class of e-bikes is limited to motor size and maximum speed. In Europe, the motor's power can't exceed 250 watts, and the maximum speed is 25 kilometers an hour, or 16 miles an hour, whereas in Canada and the US, for a class 1 e-bike, the speed is limited to 32 kilometers an hour, or 20 miles an hour. In both countries, an e-bike can be controlled with a throttle, raising it to class 2. However, in Canada, the maximum motor size is 500 watts, whereas in the U.S. it's 750 watts. In most jurisdictions in the U.S., an e-bike can have a maximum speed of 28 kilometers an hour or 45 kilometers an hour and still be considered a bicycle. This concludes part one of Robert's Guide to Buying an Electric Bike. Join me for part two, where we will be talking about motors. You won't need any technical knowledge to understand what I'll be talking about, but there are differences about motors that you must be aware of, otherwise you could end up making the wrong choice. Don't miss that.